cool. Hey everyone, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and I'm standing in what used to be my parents' garage, but me and my printers have taken over pretty quickly, and now there's not much room to park cars anymore. But uh, it's coming together really well, and one of the latest additions is this really nice workbench that my dad put together, complete with a giant pegboard backing, and you guys know I love the pegboards. So everything looks great, I just thought this whole place needed a little bit of a make anything touch. So I decided to make a nice big logo to throw up on this pegboard today. And I did something similar with the Matter Hackers logo here. I basically just took their logo and put these two little pegs on the back that allow me to just throw it in place if I can find the holes, eh, there we go. Just pops into place like that. It's really cool. And uh, I figured I'd do the same thing with the Make Anything logo. That was pretty easy, but with the Make Anything logo, things are gonna get a little trickier because there's that real thin circle that goes around everything, the triangles floating in the middle, and we've got text underneath all of that. So getting all of that to stay up on the pegboard and look good is gonna take some non-conventional tricks, perhaps. So stick around and you're bound to learn something. Let's get right to it. We're gonna start out in Fusion 360 because of course we need to make our 3D model. So I'm gonna use this insert DXF prompt. I already have this DXF file of my logo which I created in Illustrator and it's already to scale so I don't have to change the size or anything but I'm just gonna go ahead and orient this so it's kind of centered above the origin. It's not really necessary but it's just kind of a general good practice. So the logo's in place, and the next thing we're gonna wanna do is create a grid of dots that represent the holes in the pegboard. So I'll just draw one circle at first, and then I'm gonna use the dimension tool to give this a size of 6.3 millimeters, which is just slightly smaller than the quarter inch holes on the pegboard. With that circle selected, I'm gonna go ahead and find the rectangular pattern tool, and with that I can make the entire grid in one step. So let's go ahead and set the distance here to spacing and make the distance between each one, one inch. So that'll make it so it perfectly lines up with the actual pegboard I have on my wall. From there, I'll just increase the quantity until my grid is large enough to fit my entire logo. So there's my grid and you can see I gave it plenty of space because the next thing I wanna do is kind of move around my logo and figure out the best way to line it up with this grid. Let's go back into my sketch for the Make Anything logo, select it all, and then use the Move command to start shifting this around. The idea here is to move the logo around until it overlaps as many pegs as possible. That way I can use those holes to stick all the letters into place. Unfortunately, I realized that the text on my logo is a bit too small, and there's no real way to orient the logo so that each letter has its own peg. So for now, let's just delete this text and we'll focus on the logo itself because that's got a little bit more surface area. I'm gonna use the move command again, and this time I'll be focusing on that outer circle, trying to get it to overlap as many pegs as possible. Now the weight of the line for this ring is actually thinner than the pegs themselves, but I was able to find this position where the ring almost completely overlaps at least three pegs. You can see the one peg right on the top, and then we've got these two near the bottom that basically form this triangle, and that should do a great job of holding everything in place. I'm gonna go back into the sketch of our grid and change the dimension of that circle to 6.4 just to make the tolerance a little bit tighter for these pegs. And now I'll use the extrude command to bring my logo into three dimensions. Let's go ahead and extrude this six millimeters. That looks like a good thickness for this logo. So we've got our logo and now we just need to extrude the pegs that we decided to use. So I'll go ahead and use the extrude command again but as you can see, when I try to select these pegs, it also selects that bit that is off the edge of the logo. So I'm gonna go down here to the timeline and grab that sketch of the grid and move it to the end of the timeline. Now I can edit that grid sketch and I'll use the project command by hitting P to bring the sketch of my logo into that sketch as well. So now we have all my lines in this one sketch and if we do create now, you can see when I select one of those circles, it only selects the part of the peg that overlaps with the line. So it's gonna create these pegs that aren't exactly circular, but there's enough of the peg that it will hold in place on the pegboard. For the triangles, we've got more surface area, so we have plenty of pegs that we could use, 
but we really only need to select three, and I wanna make sure that they're on both sides of the logo, so we're actually gonna select this partial peg here on the right as well, and we'll just select this one that's dead center of that triangle. So we've got our pegs selected, now let's extrude those in the opposite direction of the logo. So that's a minus six millimeter extrude. All right, so that's pretty much it, but I'm gonna quickly add a few small fillets to the end of my pegs. That way it's easier to align things with the pegboard when I'm sticking it up on my wall. Just select all the top edges of the pegboard and we'll give it a 1.5 millimeter radius. I'm also gonna go back to that second extrude and increase it from minus six to minus seven millimeters just to make sure it's really nice and secure on my wall. All right, we're all set and we could save individual STLs, but I'm just gonna go up here and save the entire thing as one file since we're just gonna print it all at once anyways. So I'll go ahead and export that, have the refinement at high, save that as an STL and we're good to print. Here's the logo printing out on my new CR10S, which is the upgraded version of the CR10. And I'll talk more about that in future videos, but as you can see, it did a great job of printing out my logo. Once the build plate is cooled down, the logo comes right off the bed and I can stick it straight onto my pegboard. It's a nice snug fit, so that 6.4 millimeter diameter for the pegs was a perfect size. So this looks great, but I really want that text. So I'm gonna make it work whether or not I can use the pegs. So here are all the individual letters for my logo type and I gave them that same six millimeter extrusion, but I didn't put any pegs on them. Instead, I'm gonna use an adhesive to stick these letters onto my pegboard, but I do want them to be really nicely lined up so that this doesn't look sloppy. So what I'm gonna do is open up Illustrator and I'm gonna create a tabloid sized document. Then I'm gonna bring in the exact same DXF file that I used to make the 3D models, and I'm gonna bring that in to scale. The reason I'm using this 11 by 17 document is because I have a large format printer and that's the size that I'm gonna print this out at. Here's the print dialog in Illustrator and I'm just gonna make sure this is set not to scale and I'm gonna make the media size a borderless tabloid print. Now I'll go ahead and print that out on just some regular old white copy paper. If I didn't have a large printer like this, I could always just print on regular size pages and tile it together, but this is gonna make things a bit easier for me. For the next step, I wanna cut out my logo. So I'm gonna cut out the circle, and then I'll also cut out the individual letters. And I don't have to be super perfectly neat, as you can see, but it is important that you cut ever so slightly outside of the black outline. Once I have all the letters cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and tape this whole page up on my pegboard, using that circular cutout to get the spacing right with my logo. I noticed that the G here was on a seam, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move everything over just a tiny bit, and then I'll tape it up. All right, now it's time to stick our letters up on the pegboard, and I'm gonna be using this Japanese double-sided tape as my adhesive. I think it's a great solution because this stuff is pretty darn strong and the letters will stay up, but if for some reason I do need to pull the letters off, it won't damage the pegboard. So as you can see, I'm just cutting these little slivers of tape and I'm sticking those onto the back of the letter. And then we'll go ahead and stick it up on my pegboard using that piece of paper I taped up as our guide. This A is a little bit trickier because it's got mostly rounded lines, so I'll just use a slightly larger piece of the double stick tape and then I'll take my X-Acto knife and cut away the excess tape. I'll add a couple more patches. I figured three little strips of tape is enough to hold it up there nice and securely. From here on out, we're just gonna do the exact same thing with all the other letters. Putting on all that tape and then sticking them up using that paper as a guide. Once all the letters are stuck on there, I can just peel this paper away for the big reveal. Take a look at that. The alignment is as good as I could have asked for, and overall, it just looks really professional and nice. In fact, I like how this looks so much that I printed out a second version of everything and created another logo for my studio upstairs. Oh yes, very nice. All right, I like that. I like that a lot. I think it looks really clean, really professional, ties this space together. I'm very excited. The transformation is nearly complete. I hope you guys found this video useful or interesting at the very least. 
I'm guessing most of you don't have your own logos that you need to stick up on your pegboards, but if you do have a pegboard, which I highly suggest, you can always uh, use this same technique and put up logos for your favorite bands or brands or whatever it may be. It's a pretty cool way to decorate. If you do want to put up the Make Anything logo, well, thank you. I'm honored and humbled, and you can download that at mmf.io slash makeanything, where you will find this file for free, along with all the other files that I design here that you can uh, print out yourself. You might also want to visit makeanything.design slash favorites to learn more about the printers I use today. I'm creating a list up there with all my favorite printers, as well as 3D pens and other tools. That's a nice little resource for you guys if you're interested in getting a 3D printer of your own. So check that out. Check out the rest of makeanything.design. I'm just getting started with it, but it'll be building up over time. And um, yeah, that's it for today. Until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. Ciao.